Well, so that was a quick design side, and now we have another uh, panel discussion. Um, uh, I would like to in, uh, invite the, um, the panelists on the stage. If you don't mind, uh, when I call your name, just start sitting like that, because <laughs> then I can remember who's who. So I would first want to uh, welcome to the stage Ollie Taylor, and he is the Associate Director of the Anthesis Consulting Group, uh, consulting on sustainable performance life cycle analysis and has this amazing product. Yeah. Yes. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, next, I would like to um, welcome Kelly Covington. Uh, she is part of the co-founder of Sustainable Marine Alliance. Welcome. Then I would like to welcome Amadeo. Uh, Migali, he's the founder, managing director, and designer um, of MECAD. Welcome. Uh -huh. Then I would like to uh, welcome Francis Huber. He is the co founder and CEO, also naval architect, of Champonet Huber. Hello. Specialized in fluid dynamics. Nice, thank you. And finally, um, uh, two, two more, we have Simon Turnel, Turner, Global Sales Director of Sunreef Yachts. Welcome. Thank and, you. And uh, we get lucky enough that Hannah is still here. She is a naval architect working uh, as a su sustainable design specialist. Welcome. So what, I, what I'd like to do is just, um, since... Um, let, we'll start with, uh, I think, with Hannah. Um, just tell the, you have just one or two minutes, tell the audience um, who you are, what you're doing, and if you have been at the show today, like what are some impressions, what are some things that you're seeing? Well, good afternoon, once again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Hanna Dombrovska, uh, I'm a I, I have a rather uh, technical uh, background. I've been working for 15 years as a uh, naval architect with a variety of uh, projects, uh, starting from catamarans ending at 100-meter uh, luxury yachts, uh, getting familiar with production processes uh, and all the processes uh, in included, involved. Uh, I, s I made a step to, to commit myself, my experience and passion fully towards sustainability within the in industry uh, and I'm uh, very excited to be here in, in Dusseldorf uh, where I was presenting uh, Yeti which is our uh, uh, creation tool to help uh, towards the sustainable uh, solutions uh, acceleration within the industry um, and what I what I well I haven't been too, too long uh, at, the, at the show unfortunately uh, I'm very pleased to, to, I just saw your presentation, I'm very happy to see a little bit of a fresh uh, uh, perspective. Uh, I am very much supporting everybody who, who is uh, promoting sustainability within the yachting industry, no longer to be uh, skeptical about it and no longer to see it as a three huggers uh, conversations so yeah that's that's my major and i'm i'm happy also to see the uh, sun panels uh, the the uh, no uh, solar panels uh, yeah. Uh, yeah so th this kind of uh, uh, inventions and people who have power to do that uh, yeah. i will always uh, promote and support yeah I've, s I've also been seeing some amazing things and some depressing things so it's kind of i think we're set right now at a crossroads exactly okay uh simon yeah uh guten tag uh, points. hello everyone um, I'm here on behalf of our founder, Francis Lapp, who is the, the artist, the painter behind our yachts. Um, I'm just a dumb salesman, so please don't be too hard on me. I've only been in the company about six minutes, uh, <laughs> getting longer every day. Uh, but I have been in yachting about uh, 25 years in, in various different uh, roles. The reason I'm here is because uh, when, when I'm in England on my sailboat sailing around in the Solent, I see all these giant, beautiful motor yachts coming by, and I admire them. But then we wonder they're burning fossil fuels for no other reason than pleasure. It's not transport, they're not moving food. The end game is just pleasure. 
and we have a duty to protect our oceans, uh, to, to help the planet. Uh, so a duty technically in the industry to speed up what we're doing. And if we don't do it, the regulators are going to force us to do it. So I hope that uh, the reason I'm with Sunreef is I hope we're on the leading edge curve of this. And we know we can do much better. But it's uh, an honor to be here with these prestigious people. Yeah, well, thank you. And uh, thanks for mentioning that, too. <laughs> OK, uh, Francis. Hello. Could you yeah. also talk about your America Cup? Because that's yes. pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah, so my background is from the racing industry, and especially America's Cup been uh, participating, I think, in the last uh, six America's Cup, and uh, too successful. So, <laughs> And uh, I've been working some for more than 20 years in, the, in this field and uh, specialized in uh, hydrodynamics and uh, fluid dynamics. So for us, it's true that sustainability is really coming from not design, not material, but ener energy e efficiency. So with my uh, business partner, Mario, who's a very famous uh, foil designer, uh, we set up this company six years ago, and our activities are really to support naval architects, shipyards, startups. We work with a lot of uh, startups also in the foiling industry to develop uh, efficient design from a um, fluid dynamics uh, point of view. And uh, so also from propulsion, how can we propel uh, ships with alternative uh, and not uh, fuels? So our background on, I mean, let's say, the, the sustainability project we're working for, besides uh, selling yachts, uh, for motor yachts is especially uh, foiling yachts because it's one of the uh, way you can go electric because you reduce massively the, the consumption, uh, other aspects like comfort and experience, etc. But uh, so this foiling boat uh, market is a big part of our activities and also as a fluid dynamicist, we do a lot of uh, R&D in alternative propulsion and especially for the maritime transportation where we develop uh, system to go zero emission. OK. Thank you. Um, Amadeo? Could <coughs> I'm an naval architect. I'm a, my company, uh, Mikad, is uh, used to work for uh, large boat builders. Few are uh, uh, Benetto Group, uh, Azimut Benetti Group, uh, uh, in uh, Bavaria, Sealand Yacht, uh, Green Lines, and so on. Um, I'm at the same time, I'm a professor of <coughs> IP craft at the University of Trieste and expert of the Climate and the Innovation uh, uh, Agency of European Commission for the Blue Economy. Uh, we sustain uh, the, 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 the idea of uh, offering something new to the market uh, and something sustainable on the market. And uh, one of the reasons why I'm here is that we contributed to the development uh, of the rule for the LCA study in the boat building industry. So you're so not just for the boating industry, you're also working not only for in the cars and on No, uh, we, we, we have some experience with train, but mainly, mainly in boating. So. Okay, but mainly boating. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Kelly? Hi, thank you very much. Um, my name is Kelly Covington. Um, I'm a sustainability consultant, but today I'm here to talk on behalf of the Sustainable Marine Alliance. Um, it's a new association that um, has been born from the competitive sailing um, circuit. So I've worked also with the America's Cup, um, but also with a lot of offshore um, sailing, so the ocean race. Um, I'm based in Brittany in Lorient, which is uh, perhaps the capital of offshore sailing. Um, and what we've seen um, is that competitive sailing has been doing a lot of work pushing sustainability. Um, like many of us here, we're, we're, we're passionate about the ocean, so it's very natural for that to happen. And there's, there's a lot of incredible initiatives. Um, but with other sustainability professionals across the sport of sailing particularly, we really, we really see a need to collaborate more, uh, to come together, to, to learn from each other, uh, to share data when we can, uh, challenging subject. Um, but, um, but really the only way to, to go as fast as we need to go is, is going to be through collaboration. So um, I'm here to, to talk on behalf of, uh, behalf of the Sustainable Marine Alliance. Okay. And did you already know Francis or did you know each other? Okay. Sure we, uh, All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. And uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Holly. Cool. Uh, so, yeah. Introduce yourself. 
Oli Taylor. Uh, I work for the Anthesis Consulting Group, who are one of the largest global consultancies focused purely on sustainability. Uh, and I'm on the stage today because my professional background was 15 years in the marine industry, working across a variety of commercial and new product development roles. Uh, but a couple of years ago, I kind of committed myself fully, like Hannah, to the, the sustainability of this industry. So at Anthesis Group, we, we consult across a whole number of global clients, but we have a marine specialism with a tool called Marine Shift 360, which is a life cycle assessment tool designed specifically for the industry to start understanding the, uh, the impacts that exist within the products and the use phase at the end of life. So the, the tool takes into account the full life cycle of a boat and allows manufacturers, i.e. designers and engineers, to control the emissions that exist within these products themselves. Okay. And... Um and that tool, is it, you can only use it at the, at the start of building a boat, or is it, um, can it also be used for an, an older boat? Or? Uh, yeah, I mean, you could use it to <coughs> retrospectively work out the, the footprint of an existing vessel, but it's primarily designed for the uh, kind of the design side of the world in a prospective way to look and simulate variables that exist within the product, so in terms of natural fibers versus conventional fibers, different propulsion systems, energy pathways that come into the production of the vessel, uh, the whole mix that goes into creating a boat, you look, look at it with Marine Shift 360 and, and hopefully yeah. create the lowest impact solution available. And, and uh, Marine Shift 360, is it just for Europe or is it a global? Uh, it's a global tool, um, <coughs> working with a really diverse group of boat builders already across, across the sector, including okay. water sports manufacturers as well, so it's not just boats. Um, but yeah, it's open to anyone global. Uh, there's a free version of it that anyone can use, and then we've got a subscription basis for okay. further functionality within <coughs> the software. Good, okay. Um, I think, um, I think I'm also going to ask you to answer your question, because <laughs> since we're already talking. Um, so, yeah, uh, how, so how many people are using it now, the, the Marine Shift 360? So, Anthesis as an organization is about 1,500 specialist okay. sustainability people. Um, within the Marine Shift team, I'm kind of leading it and managing it, project director. Um, and then we've got a big team of software developers behind the tool who are constantly improving the tool as we get feedback from, from the users. Okay. Um, but in terms of the front end, it's, it's me working with the industry oh, okay. uh, to try and reduce impact. And, and your, your background is also programming or do you build? No, it? so my, my background is, is actually <coughs> in the kind of commercial side of the industry. So across the sales and marketing, looking okay. at what products the, the market is demanding uh, and kind of bringing those product programs to life with the various manufacturers. Okay. Um, so yeah, kind of a more of a commercial background actually. All right, uh, yeah. Thank you. Um, Kelly, I'm gonna ask you your question. Uh, what are the barriers facing competitive sailing boat industry in becoming more sustainable and how will we overcome them? Um, yeah, so I mean, this is a subject I looked at a lot um, over the last couple of years. I had the opportunity to run a series of workshops um, underneath the banner of the Ocean Race and supported by one of their main sponsors, 11th Hour Racing, to look at um, specifically at sustainable uh, boat, boat design and construction. Yeah. Um, and to get into that, I really tried to delve in with the industry. Um, I did a lot of stakeholder research to understand those those kind of barriers because I, I think we also we sort of know what we need to do, um, but there's always those um, those you know, as you start digging, there's always those things underneath that, that really are the blocks um, and, you, and you need to dig a bit to get there. Um, so, I mean, oh, <laughs> there's a lot, um, really. Um, I mean, the obvious one is, is performance. You know, we, we've been designing in a certain way for a long time. Uh, we don't want to lose performance. The sailors don't want to lose performance. The sponsors don't want to lose performance. So how can, we, how can we make this transition and still build really high-performing boats? However, I would actually say that that's maybe not the... You know, underneath that, there's a whole scale of, of, pro of problems um, that come to light. And, you know, we're, we're partly, you know, we're very, uh, lots of SMEs in the boat building industry. And that's something that's applicable to, to all of us um, who don't have a lot of research and development. Uh, we might have made a lot of investments in particular processes, type, certain technologies. Um, to make a change now is, is you know, that there's, there's 15 years of amortization to, to pay off. So these are sort of economic issues that are underneath there. Um, on top of that, um, there's a lot of interest in new materials, uh, but people don't trust them. And this is a subject that we're really looking at a lot with the Sustainable Marine Alliance this year, is how can we build trust in these alternative materials? Yeah. And that's not just from, um, 
you know, technical properties, yes, we need to build trust in that. But people also want to trust that the environmental um, potential of these materials is really good enough. Um, if they're going to invest in these in these changes, and as, as then being a small company, there's a lot of risk involved. You don't have this R&D capacity. If you're going to take that risk, how can you be sure that you're making the right decision? So again, a lot of that comes back to trusting the data. Tools like Marine Shift 360 are playing a really, really important part in that. Um, but we need to share the data more. Uh, we need to find ways to allow companies to to, to trial things. Um, the Amoka class are, are doing some great work in this. Um, and they've put a rule in place around alternative materials, uh, encouraging people to do it. And so there's a small... What was that? What, what did you say? Uh, the Amoka class. Imoka so the class. Amoka 60 class. So that's the class that does the Vendée <coughs> Globe. It's currently doing the ocean race right now. They're sailing okay. between uh, Cape Verde and, and Cape Town as we speak. Okay. Um, and so uh, this year they put a rule in place um, to encourage you can use up to 100 kilograms of alternative materials. And that weight gets taken off your light ship uh, uh, measurement. So really? there's, well, there's an argument about how good that uh, actually is, but they're trying to incentivize using it. And through that, they're, they're building new partnerships. So um, a couple of the teams are working with Green Boats. I see you've got Green Boats materials there yeah. um, to, to, to test these materials. And there's real benefits coming from both sides, actually. Like from, I think I, I know Green Boats would say the same thing because they're working in this hugely um, high performance driven area. And at the same time, the teams are being incentivized to start testing these materials in non-structural capabilities. Yeah, um, and you would even think that maybe the race organizers should should say you can't come here with a fully fiber class boat because then you'll be disqualified. I mean, wouldn't that be a one way to, to force people to be innovative? It would be. It's interesting. It's a subject I've, I've been up against. It's the classes that set the rules. So uh, it needs to be a collaboration between the race organizers and the classes that they want on their state li on their on their start lines. Yeah. Um, but it's really working with the classes. And as I said, Imoka are leading the way on this and, and putting some rules in place. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it, it's challenging because, again, you, you need to trust that we're going in the right direction. Um, and so there's definitely a period of measurement that's needing to happen. And again, uh, Amoka are doing this, you know, they now have to do a life cycle assessment with Marisha 360 yeah. uh, for every boat that's built. Um, and so with that data, we can start understanding really where we need to, to start directing our, yeah. um, our efforts. Um, but on top of that, I, I would, you know, say, you know, the, the challenges that are up against us are, are really systemic, you know. It, it, it's we've been we've been developing our industry in one way for a long time, and we're now being asked to change very quickly. Yeah, um, and that's even more challenging for for small for small companies. Yeah. and and um, you know, so what we're really trying to encourage is is finding ways to collaborate more, um, sharing. Uh, the last workshop I held in in December, and we've had. Um, uh, you know, 150 different companies involved in these workshops in, in one way or the other. Um, you know, a, a great idea that we loved came, that came out of this was saying, well, okay, if we're not willing to share our successes, because, you know, that's how we're building our businesses, maybe we could share our mistakes. Um, okay. And this idea of building a library of errors um, is, is being born. Okay. Um, to say, okay, well, you know, we, we can at least say, don't do this or do do this because again this is one of the other challenges is that there's a whole load of different ways we can we can go around using these materials um, and one thing that looks good on paper might not be the best solution when you actually try and do it either so yeah. there's a lot of areas that we're gonna we're gonna fail yeah. um, and we need to try and find a way to to enable failure um, and, and share those failures as well but if it yeah. Again, if you're, if you're a small company, you're going to be scared of, of failing. But if you can try and learn from others, um, share your mistakes, but then learn from where other people are, uh, are getting it right, you know, we're going to be able to go faster. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, Medio, another question for you. Um, compared to other factors that your clients demand, how high up is sustainability? <laughs> Well, or do they not care? <laughs> well, likely is not on the top, on the top of the of the of the requirements, because industry is not ready. So at the moment, I think that sustainability is something the industries are moving towards, well in advance. But it's a, this is a fortune because we are really far to be able to offer something that could be acceptable. Yeah. Because now. You know that uh, in our history, 
we, we, we made a lot of both sustainable. Since last uh, 60 uh, of the last century, we, uh, we were used to build uh, boats in wood with, uh, with sail, and, this, and, this, and so it's possible. Yeah. We did it. And uh, I, I remember, I think five years ago, I made a lecture into the Cantiere Carlini. Cantiere Carlini was used in Italy to build uh, Sparkman and Stephen's boat uh, in the 40. And uh, the son of, uh, of, uh, of Mr. Carlini told me that uh, his, uh, his son uh, was used to say that uh, the boat they were building uh, should last more than his own life. Yeah. And this is the first point. Now, unfortunately, we have uh, a different approach. Industries is pushing a lot to, to offer something new every five years, more yeah. probably. Yeah. And uh, this has an impact uh, that we should uh, uh, consider yeah. because the, 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 the number of boats we are producing is probably not the right one. Yeah. The use of the boat we are producing uh, is not the right one. one because uh, and the, in f for some of the builders are considering this approach. So I think that the boat sharing uh, could be one of the solution because now we are building a lot of boats that have an impact uh, 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 on, on the in terms of, uh, of pollution when building, when using and when dismantling that uh, could be saved uh, when, uh, when if, if uh, we can share periods uh, of use of the, of the boots. So at the moment, uh, is, uh, there, there are few customers uh, that, uh, th that are influenced uh, by the rest of the market, by car markets mainly, that are asking something new. And uh, at the moment, the, 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 uh, the industry is offering something that is uh, that could be considered better in terms could be considered better in terms of sustainable uh, sustainability, but uh, uh, it should be it should we, we should be care about considering really from a technical point of view yeah. in that way because uh, actually you see that there are a lot of uh, that there are a lot of energy that industry is, is pushing on uh, electrical uh, uh, boats yeah. that is good, but then if you use uh, the, the uh, electrical power from shore that is uh, the, and if uh, we want to if this uh, energy is produced by fossil fuels yeah, uh, again no point, this is yeah. uh, this is for sure <coughs> less sustainable because then we have batteries then we have uh, lots of other stuff that we are building so the point is uh, <coughs> industry is doing something but uh, as it, this is not enough, uh, not enough i think that uh, um, we, we are happy that yeah. customers are not ready to ask for that oh uh, yeah yeah yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, um, Francis, you're, uh, for you, um, the, um, oh yeah, it was about um, adopting more hydrofoil uh, technology into not just racing, but maybe in other, uh, because it's so efficient, right? Yes, there is right now a, a big trend toward this uh, this new industry, which is, Quite funny because hydrofoil exists for a century, more or less. But it but seems like it started yesterday. <laughs> but it's, uh, the, the, the America's Cup in San Francisco really was a, a big kick in the industry. It comes, I think, from uh, many factors. Uh, material, for sure, because flying boats, you need to be light. So then after you have the trade-off that, that we were saying before, if we go towards sustainable uh, material, we're going to have to make some trade-off as well. Uh, I think also the control system, the, I mean, a lot of, uh, of different uh, components made it more accessible. And I think also the R&D that was done in America's Cup spread uh, all over the, the, the industry. Again, uh, I, don't, I don't see foiling as the solution for all the sustainability from an energy point of view, I mean, uh, in, in, the, in our sector, but it is one of the possibility, especially when you want to go towards electrification of the, of, of the fleet, because the problem of uh, current uh, electric motor yachts is autonomy. Yeah. You, you, the range or the autonomy. And with a uh, hydrofoil, it's true that you, you can really go in, a, in another further. world. Yeah. You have also a comfort, which is uh, a game changer. And for people that are not from the sea, 
uh, sailing on the flying boats is, uh, I mean, you don't get seasick. It's, <laughs> it's a, it's a is bit Is it true topic. you don't get seasick? Uh, on, I mean, it's filtering so much the motion. It's, uh, and, and actually, a lot of developments we do right now in the industry, uh, nautical industry, is use hydrofoil for comfort. Uh, for comfort. So not even it's for efficiency, yeah. just for comfort. Yeah, and then okay. uh, again, hydrofoil right now is, you have, I think, three segments. You have to go fast, and so racing or some uh, way of transportation where you would have to go really fast. Uh, efficiency, as we were saying, toward electrification and comfort. Because it's really a game changer. I remember the first test we did on, uh, we worked in the early development of the small sea bubble uh, five years ago. And I remember on the, the first few tests we did, it was, you know, at uh, f 5 p.m. Uh, summer uh, in the Mediterranean when all the boats are leaving and it's completely chaotic. While well, it's a fantastic day, but it's completely chaotic and I mean, uh, I come from the sailing. Uh, I don't enjoy so much more uh, motor boats also because comfort is horrible <laughs> most of the time. And on a flying boat, you're just filtering everything. It was yeah. just, and, and, and to me, uh, I was coming from America's Cup where I, I thought the, the fascination in uh, Hydro Falls were the speed and the boats were going uh, very, very slow, 15 okay. knots. Yeah. But this comfort was just unbelievable. I, I, I could bring my mother and my mother uh, never came in one of my boats because she yeah. gets seasick even on the dock. <laughs> so uh, again, hydrofoil is a solution for certain things. Yeah. But in general, in sustainability, it is obvious there is not one solution. You see yeah. it in the energy. It's not uh, you don't want to go only uh, wind turbine or, yeah. or nuclear. Or w I mean, you, we have some technology, and according to the, to the, demand, the, the objective, yeah. the demand, the, the also the, the state uh, in the development, uh, you have to go in one or another direction. And this is what's very complex right now. And as I was telling you, we, 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 work, we start to work, work a lot in the maritime industry, because uh, as you said, there is two segments. There is the leisure, and you can criticize a lot leisure because it's not useful. Then you, you have the commercial, the transportation, which is a need like energy, etc. And right now in the leisure industry, until we get really true legislation enforcing or pushing <laughs> us to go in the direction, we will never yeah. uh, change much. Well, that As you were saying in the racing, yeah. if the rules, the organization don't start to be strict. Yeah. Hey, you always want to go to performance or to cost uh, in the industry. Yeah. So you, you need to have the legislation. In the maritime industry, uh, right now, I mean, you need to go toward decarbonization because by the IMO, by the rules, yeah. you're going to be bound to that. And so there's a lot of, of, uh, of uh, I mean, you need to invest. And also, I, I do believe that in this field, you are talking with big uh, industrial players, you have more R&D resources. And in the nautical industry, it, it, it's really hard. The, the market is very competitive. It's m even big shipyard is, is, is not uh, yeah, automotive industry, etc. Yeah. So, uh, and, and you don't have just one solution. This yeah. is the problem is that as but of But it does seem that hydrofoil and electric is a good combination. Yes, right? for, for example, we, I mean, over the last uh, two years, I think we've developed uh, f five or six different foiling boats tenders between uh, 8 to 14 meters. Some are, let's say, uh, proof of concept to go for bigger yachts, okay? And some are just for, f for small tenders uh, or, or and uh, like Candela style uh, a boat. And it's true that, I mean, you can like uh, electric or you can, I mean, it's another topic or so. That, that's why sustainability is very complex yeah. because I see it from an energy and fluid dynamic point of view. You guys have a full picture, and uh, it's true that sometimes you have also to compromise <laughs> uh, many things. For us, for example, you go for a falling boat, you, you need to be quite light. Yeah. So you have an impact on the, on, on With the, the material. On the material. Yeah. Uh, but I think for sure 
the in the nautical industry, legislation is going to be important, but you cannot be too drastic also on the on, on the player. I mean, otherwise uh, we... Well, so yesterday there was a guy in, in the panel who was saying there's already going to be uh, rules in place in two to five years. For sure. So that's really, I mean, in terms of development, that's so quick. You know. I was. Uh, I think so in the Balearian uh, island they are pushing a lot uh, yeah. for. I mean to reduce the the the, the impact also. So yeah. it, it it is necessary, but it's always uh, hard if you don't. Uh, the industry is never ready. Yeah. But you have to put so. But you, you have, have to, to put the rules. Or but otherwise even to look you at the car industry, it was also kind of forced. You know. But I think one of the big big difference right now in, in our industry is that five, six years ago, we were working with startup, Seabubble, uh, uh, Candela, th those kind of... Uh, and the big shipyard or the big brands were looking at it from quite far. Uh, last year, we started to work with uh, San Lorenzo, with Blue Game, because we are developing the, the, the hydrogen foiling catamaran uh, for them. And I remember in, in Cannes, uh, when the CEO of, uh, of San Lorenzo was doing his uh, annual speech, I mean, he was taking the... I don't know if you've heard about this polemic that happened in France uh, this uh, last uh, summer about a private jet. And he was saying, we are l leisure right now. They are talking a lot about private jet and rich people, etc. But at some point, the environmental uh, is also very well, linked limited, to, yeah. the, to the wealth of the people. And if at some point, as an industry, we don't anticipate, the problem is that either the public or some governments or some parts are going to ban or are going to be yeah, very well that's, dramatic. Well, that's what it's looking like. I just, Simon, I just wanted to ask, would, would you put the hydrofoil on the, on the sun reef? <laughs> Would you put it? <laughs> it's already <laughs> happening. Oh, it is. Give us a few months and you'll see it. Oh, okay. So it's top secret information. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So that was the question. Uh, what are some key design innovations of solar and sustainable yachts? So that would be maybe one of them. And some. Yeah. Other. It's it's. Uh, I guess one component part. Um, I just wanted to add from a, a market perspective. We as a company get about. 150 to 200 inquiries a week. And in 2023, I would say roughly half of those are for an, an eco-friendly product. Really? So that's, I think that's pretty amazing. And yeah. I don't have all the data going back, but I'd say the shift is really happening. So the customers are very, uh, very aware of this now. In certain parts of the world, you'll see young kids are refusing to go on their parents' boats, which are fossil fueled. You know, that culture is, is changing. I, I've got a, a niece in Spain. She works with animals and she has no interest in a car or, or you know, fossil fuel boats. In California, in the US, you see this consistently with young people. So that demand's going to come from them as well and, and pushing their parents. The innovations, I think you have to look at it holistically. I think what we've seen, and particularly on bigger boats, where the challenge is you've got a lot of weight, so how do we make anything green? And what's happened, we've <coughs> bolted on solar panels or, or other solutions, but it's the holistic design of the, the boat. What, what does it really mean? What's the heart and soul? And therefore, how can you incorporate all of these technologies? Solar, hydro regeneration, uh, wind power, foiling, and of course, you know better than anyone, it's the, the design of the holes to make them far, far more efficient as well. So that's your starting point. You've got to start with uh, how the boat's going to be effective to incorporate the technologies, not an old standard motor yacht and how do we put those technologies on. So yeah. I think that, that's our uh, design uh, philosophy. And in the, in the yard today, we have three or four boats just awaiting delivery to customers that are super, super eco. Um, not just in the way that they're going to operate, but in terms of their materials. We're using basalt, uh, f uh, flax, uh, n synthetic teaks, you know, all of these different materials throughout, throughout the boat. And, and we're seeing the customers demand that. And did you say you're working with green boats as well? 
Why with not? Did you say you're working with green boats, the, the ones that do this material, the, the flax, or...? I, I, I don't know who. I don't know these necessarily these, these contractors. Okay. So I'm just a dumb salesman. But okay. um, uh, you know, we're talking to hundreds of companies every, every week in yeah. terms of sustainable products to incorporate um, and, and increasing what we have because we want to do that. That's the heart and soul of where our business is going. Yeah. But the customers are demanding it. Yeah. So where can I see this beautiful boat that you're talking about with uh, the, like uh, the hydrofoil solar... Later this year. But at in Cannes or, or? I don't know about that, okay. uh, but later this year. Okay. <laughs> I have to know. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, Hannah, um, so earlier we saw your, your lecture, of course. Um, yeah, so this, the question is how to accelerate sustainability in the super yacht industry. Um, I guess regulation is one of them, but that's, yeah, do you think that's also a large, giving somebody the facts? That's a huge question, but I can uh, perfectly align with uh, all of the speakers here and I can relate with uh, uh, any aspect and I'm really happy also to hear uh, your remarks and observations. Uh, and there is uh, several to start with. Um, I will try to list it uh, as I can uh, now uh, look at it holistically, just that's uh, the, how the Water Revolution Foundation is uh, approaching the market and uh, all the collaboration that we are creating, bridging, and I'm happy also to see uh, Kelly that uh, also involved uh, recently. Um, so regulations, yes, um, and the Water Revolution Foundation also started from the a little bit larger scale of, uh, of yachts. Uh, that's why I say I'm happy here in uh, Dusseldorf. Uh, and one of the reasons is that uh, the smaller boats are showing, and as, as a naval architect, uh, th 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 there is a bigger challenge to, to uh, have a, a, a tangible uh, improvement in uh, in the uh, lifetime uh, consumption or footprint. So uh, all of the aspects should be analyzed. And uh, regulations, uh, again, coming from the larger yachts, even there, uh, the regulations is not yet the answer. Straightforward. Uh, it has been uh, it has been uh, an idea for for to to accelerate, but. Uh, at this moment, uh, the only regulations in place are above 400 GT. So what happens, and that's how the Water Revolution Foundation was also created, uh, the, the, the big, powerful uh, shipyards decided, hey, let's, let's start something on our, ourselves. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, step ahead. And that's, that's a beautiful uh, initiative. Yeah. Um, nevertheless, we are at this moment also uh, involved. Uh, yeah, we, we just managed to involve five uh, class societies uh, into discussions, and they are very open. And most likely, we will be also uh, working towards something more central. And that's also important aspect uh, that could uh, help uh, if we centralize all those small activities because there are so many passionate people with, with good uh, intentions but without power, without marketing, without uh, uh, sales power even, uh, how to approach that client with sustainability. Right? Yeah. He doesn't care, especially if... Uh, so uh, the solutions we've been also discussing was uh, let's adjust uh, specifications. Let's not sell the boat on a maximum speed anymore yeah. because that's really a deciding factor you design that boat for that 18 knots and it's gonna happen maybe three times uh, within a year yeah. so it's really nonsense uh, for the uh, especially I have a sentiment coming from uh, also smaller uh, or uh, catamarans uh, where I've worked also with many French uh, designers or engineers naval architects uh, paying a lot of attention also uh, from a sailing uh, business. Uh, th th there is a lot of attention for uh, optimization and that resonates perfectly with, with your presentation, which, which would be great marketing for sustainability where it is attractive. It's, yeah. it's the way you show it. It is yeah. attractive because uh, durable or long longevity has been always in a history a, a luxury yeah. product, right? 
So why not uh, for yachting? And uh, same we see in, in a racing yacht. Uh, it's so optimized. It's so t it's it's a it's an art. You know, yeah, it's, it's, it's a piece of it's art. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, very simple one, right? Yeah. So, uh, and, and for smaller yachts, certainly the absolute optimization of uh, uh, resistance and uh, uh, applying CFD calculation by default. That that should be a standard nowadays. Uh, avoiding adding any uh, features that are increasing uh, the resistance. Uh, another solution that we, we also have, uh, uh, which can be a, a really good answer, is a sustainable solutions database. So what we do as the Water Revolution Foundation, we, and at this moment we have three products which been already went through the entire process, which is very complicated, by the way. It's uh, including the uh, in scientific institutes. Uh, it has an approach of uh, life cycle assessment uh, as well, uh, where we certify the product and we really as, uh, look at the uh, entire uh, life cycle. Uh, and we can tell, is it really worth to, is it really sustainable? We don't so like a green wash. Are you competitors of each we other? Are, uh, we are in a, in a discussion. We are, <laughs> I think, appreciating. Um, we are foundation, non-profit profit organization. Non -profit, they, yeah. they have a, a little bit more... Uh, yeah, power uh, yeah. in in the in the more practical. But you do sense. need the marketing side anyway. We, we are we uh, are in this we are in a conversation. Yeah. So you already knew each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, and, we, and I wouldn't call ourselves competitors. At no. All. We're, okay. we're we're working towards the same vision. Exactly. Okay. Um, but you're right that we do need alignment and centralized tools yes. that all produce yes. the same comparable result. I don't see well, and that's that's the beauty of of my work nowadays because I work now with all those uh, uh, shipyards, whereas indeed sharing the, or sharing the knowledge it's such a, it's it's difficult in the yeah. beginning, but once you step out of it, you're actually uh, so you are beyond that. Comp it's a it's a competitive market. Let's be yeah. honest. Yeah. But there is a way to to share that knowledge and it is stimulating and you know that you then achieve more yeah. so example for for a certified product is uh, you you mentioned the foils which it's such a simple solution right yeah. so we have uh, a hull vein which is also the the application i don't know if you're familiar with that it reduces the resistance with really significant uh, amount of uh, significant uh, percentage so simple solutions that are Available and are those solutions patented, or are they? Can everybody use them? Like for the foil, Hulven is patented. Uh, Hulven is but patented. Yeah. Then after, I mean, it's. Uh, but yeah, but there is so many other options. Uh, yeah. uh, we can talk about stabilizers, uh, yeah. which uh, exactly. nowadays you have rotors that uh, will not add additional resistance. So yeah. there, there is so many solutions that can be validated. Yeah. Yeah. So keeping it central can be. Okay. Yeah, because you also mentioned about the sharing. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Trying to find out a way to, to share in a super competitive e environment is really hard. And everyone in the sport of sailing is like, oh, we're a super competitive um, environment. We can't share. I'm like, every industry is competitive. You know, it's, and, yeah. you know it, it's not, it doesn't matter whether you're a sport or whether you're a business. Like, it's competitive. So yeah. it's always going to be difficult. Um, and I don't think it's, it's any harder in sport than in any other industry. Um, but, you know, trying to share, figuring out what we can share, uh, at when we can share. Um, you know, it might be somebody, you know, we, we can, they're not willing to share now, but maybe in a year they, they could share. Um, but also how to share. And, and, and this is what Hannah was just mentioning, um, is, is, you know, making sure that things are comparable. And this is what we're seeing with a lot of, of life cycle um, assessment and things at the moment is, is it's starting to happen. We're, we're seeing it out there. Some, some material suppliers are providing LCA data with their, with their material, but actually you're comparing apples to bananas because it, you don't know how they're doing it. You yeah. don't know what tools they're using. You don't know what databases they're using. So a lot of this sharing needs to actually be more about the, the, the format in the structure, which we do it, the yeah. structure. Um, and developing that process so that people can do it. And also, we're not all about to become LCA experts either. Like, yeah. the industry needs to be able to look at something and, and trust it yeah. um, because of the process it's gone through rather than having to look at it and go, ah, oh, right, wait a second, um, you know, they did this, they did this. You know, it, the people don't have the, the time to yeah. do that. So, so we really need to do that. Yeah. And, but well, I, I think the other, oh, sorry, I, I was just okay. going to remark on one right, thing that a, a few people have mentioned as well is this, like, holistic 
design, um, which is really interesting to hear that come through the, through the conversation because there are lots of solutions out there. There's great things happening, but I think that's another thing that we're seeing is that how we bring these things together is really critical. And something that looks good on paper might not work um, in reality. Um, an electric foil, you know, I'm sorry, an electric foil, it's a whole new idea that, but a foil with electric propulsion might be great. It might not work with another technology. So yeah. we also need to become much, much better at um, very early in the design process considering the whole the whole objective what's the product and, and we'll what's do. the process yeah. you know fitting fitting form to function yeah. you know going back like what is it we're trying to promote and that's love for the ocean that's being outside yeah. um, you know we mentioned renting boats you know there could be a whole new way to look at what it is we're trying to sell yeah. um, and and i think enabling us all to become much more mentally agile in, in what we're trying to do is, is also a kind of a competence that we're all going to have to start developing because we can't just yeah. replace one thing for something else. And I mean, you mentioned green boats earlier, and I know that part of their skill is not just in the fact that they know how to use these materials, but they've actually really had to rethink how they design, like how do they do the structural engineering. Yeah. Um, so we need to bring all of the players together Okay. Very, very early to consider what the goal is and, and rethink how we do it. Yeah. Did you want yeah, to mention? One comment because you, you, you talked about the same. In the design process now, I mean, we have all the tools available to understand if you are going in the right direction in terms of behavior of the boat, performance, efficiency. And uh, I think there is still not. Uh, on all the industry, this motivation to do it. We have all the tools. You have every, I mean, we have the, the, the competencies, etc. And uh, that's why uh, earlier on I was saying, I mean, we, we do a lot of CFD for shipyards, for boats that cannot go foiling. It's stupid to put uh, foils on the... I mean, you can put foils on some boats, they're not going to be more efficient. It may be cool, it may be for comfort, but doesn't mean it's going to be efficient. Yeah. But design a hull, optimize it, and to get the best in a certain context, you can do it. Then you need to put the resources and uh, or the budget also. And it's true that our industry is also, I mean, the industry needs to sell. And the effort often is put a lot more still on the, the sailing, on marketing, on some features for the owner in the boat, uh, because the sofa is very important as well. Yeah. And the hull, the owner doesn't see it. I mean, it's true that he's going to start to see the bill uh, from the fuel. Huh? That's, yeah. that's for sure. But also in the industry, sometimes the, <coughs> the, the person buying the boat is not the one buying the fuel, etc. So in this loop, unfortunately, the efficiency and the reduction of, uh, of fuel consumption is... Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure the whole industry is aware of that, but we are missing still uh, yeah, something. I that, yeah, I agree. Just, and I would like to also uh, come back to the, the competition uh, with what you were just saying. Um, because it's, it's really... The, the challenge is big enough. So that there is no yeah. competitor here that can solve all those problems. We, with knowledge and with scientific approach, we have solution. We know. We know how to quantify it. But it's really also not about uh, coming up, I'm the best in sustainability. I think it's just like in other markets or in the other industries, we could take a lesson. And there is a need to certify or to, to know what's valid, the trust that you were talking about. So uh, once we uh, skip that competition and, and shift towards the, the f mental, uh, the mental Change, shift towards, yeah. let's just look at the, which solutions are yeah. non-green. I just wanted to circle back to you, Ali, because, um, and then we have to wrap it up. Um, because if we, when you collect your data, could you at some point also become an advisor? You know, you could be like, if, this, if you're going to use this, this uh, boat in this way, or is there is there something that you can already get in the into the start of the process, or is it always at the end like oh you should have done that or no no I mean the software and, and LCA as a tool it, it is a uh, it's a it's variable in that you can change the inputs to the system to see what the output results in so it's absolutely about changing 
and, and this is the, it's very interesting and why I think LCA has to become the fundamental part or one of the fundamental parts of a design of a new craft is because some of the assumptions the industry make at the minute do not deliver environmental reductions. Yeah. It's very variable, but you know, electrifying all of the craft that exist in these halls today will not necessarily reduce our environmental no. impact. So you have to run the calculation before you commit to a certain design pathway to ensure that you're doing the right thing. And that's what you could do with Absolutely, just yeah. from data from from historical data you could say this is this will this will work and this won't work. Yeah, I mean it's it's as simple as if you're designing a new hull and you want to understand the the impact of just the hull structure, yeah. you can create your baseline in glass fiber, as we currently do, or carbon fiber, and then you can start looking at what happens if I change that all to flax, okay. or basalt, yeah. or any other, or, or we change the bio content of the resin system. Yeah. There's lots of these little levers that you can pull in the design process yeah. to find reductions, and when you build that up across all of the components that exist in a boat. And that's exactly what, what you've done, but were you comparing it to traditional materials, or were you just like, we don't care, we're just going to do it sustainable? or? Uh, I think it's cust customer pull, but uh, y it, it's more difficult to do it in the early stages. To use the new materials, it's probably more expensive, but you've got to try. Yeah. So it becomes the norm. And I, I wanted to make a, a quick point. If we want people to be vegetarian, the food has got to be appealing and tasty enough for the meat eaters. So they either don't know the difference or certainly don't care. And our yachting product in the future they want to see a fast, sexy, exciting boat, but it should all be green and eco without them knowing or having to worry about it. Yeah. So that should be the norm, not the other way around. Yeah. That's where we've got to get to. And I think that is a beautiful note to end on. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much. And um, yeah, I would recommend everybody exchange uh, business cards with each other because uh, you guys are all kind of on the same, uh, on the same thing. So <laughs> merci thank beaucoup. You. Thank you.